welcome, 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 LinkedIn. Steve Spiro, you're a mentor, you're a consultant, you're a business owner, but most importantly, you're a host of your own show and you're also a master connector. Steve Spiro is one of my idols and I love listening to everything that he does. He's such a dynamic individual. Some of the topics I really enjoy speaking on is how to really connect, you know, whether it be in person or through social media. I love to lead with my weaknesses. I lead with, you know, my vulnerabilities. It's fine because I'm okay with who I am. Number two is how to go from being inward focused, self-focused into others focused. Be willing to give and, and go out there and, and, and look to serve. That will attract the right things. Another one is on leveraging LinkedIn to really grow your business. You can reach a lot more people. You can broadcast a message to people that actually consented to want to know you. And then lastly, overcoming big obstacles. I love sharing. I was a shy, jabbered kid, picked on, bullied, learning disabled, dyslexic, really in a dark place. I was really in a box in the shell. And I've been able to break out of that box. And, and so I love being able to inspire people and really help them. So the Master Connector was born. The world is my networking event, right? I meet people all the time. My goal is to meet three strangers every single day. Steve is open to meeting you. You should set up a face-to-face -face with Steve. One little conversation can really change your life. So we are excited to get into this. Thank you so much, LinkedIn, for being here with us. I want to share just really quickly as we talk about rising up and connecting. And we've gone through this and we're going to talk about the pandemic world today, talking about meeting in person. I have been reading this book, Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. It's amazing. And I've actually experienced both sides of the coin, both for my own personal networking, but I've also been in some amazing houses of Scarsdale and Greenwich. And so I wanted to showcase uh, today the fact that I do own a, st a hospitality staffing company and I go out as a waiter and bartender and I'm in some of these really ridiculously wealthy houses. And what did they do? They bring their friends together and their connections over meals into their house. And Keith Ferrazzi talks about this in the book. And I thought it's something that as we're building our networks and we're aspiring to sort of rise up and connect with people better. This is a great idea. And you don't have to be fabulously wealthy with amazing art on the wall. You can put together a barbecue and bring your connections together for the backyard barbecue for the Northeast summertime. Let's get it. Get that into the plans. Work your connections. Steve, Oscar, Phil, you're invited to the barbecue. We're going to get it. Here we go. Steve, take it away. Absolutely. Good stuff here. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping everyone enjoys uh, their, their 4th of July weekend and it's a celebration of Independence Day and uh, with this amazing country and freedom that we celebrate. But um, Sir Richard Branson said, every success story has a tale of constant adaptation, right? Uh, revision and change. And we've experienced that right big time i mean there's been some definitely some things that have happened over the course of history that have changed things right of course the great american experiment uh you know this country being born a little over two thousand years ago right uh 200 years ago not 2000 years ago 200 years ago was was definitely uh you know something that changed the the face of uh you know of kind of history right but this pandemic has definitely created issues it's it's forced people to change and pivot. And we've seen some amazing things come from that, right? I think it's pushed technology. It's pushed, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, the, we were behind as far as some of the things we were doing in terms of other parts of along, uh, other countries. But uh, it is presented new opportunities, I think. We, and we're going to talk a lot about that. All, all the things that it's, it's helped us all do in a lot of different ways. And it's been amazing. It's been incredible. And so we're going to get into that. So, if you're ready for Cameron to introduce our amazing two guests, I'd like you to type in right now in the comments, uh, the way we do, uh, type in the word ready. And listen, get in the comments. We want you in the comments. We, you know, we're all about connecting and networking. So make sure you're, you're connecting and networking with the people that are in the comments. But put in ready right now, you know, hashtag ready. And uh, Cameron is about to bring up two amazing friends of ours, incredible guests. And we're excited to do a joint broadcast with them here today. All right, here comes Oscar, and we got Philip Reed. All right, 
Here we go. Let me see if I can get both on the screen here and pull myself off somehow. Uh, that th th This is the challenging part, Steve. All right. So <laughs> Oscar Capel is the most interesting man in the world. Bouncing back from a late stage job loss, a lifetime of volunteering in hospitals as a teenager, soccer referee, soccer coach, coaching coaches, children's magician, Operation Underground Railroad team leader, and recently helping to rebuild Mamernick after Hurricane Ida displaced 500 families in his village. He also raises chickens. Please welcome to the show the amazing Oscar Capel. And I have Mr. Philip Reed. Philip Reed is the president and CEO of Phoenix National Business Group, aka Phoenix National Network. Philip's company facilitates digital marketing campaigns for entrepreneurs and small businesses in the United States. Phoenix National Network also has a broadcasting channel for podcasters distributed to both video and audio platforms. Philip was born in Jamaica and raised in Yonkers, New York. Philip Reed enjoys bringing people together and celebrating life. So please welcome to the show, the powerful Philip Reed. We are so excited to have you both on the show. I just got one question. Who's this guy, Steve? Why have I never met him? <laughs> Wait, you're muted. Or, or I'm going deaf. One of I'm the here two. and I'm gone. I, you know, we, <laughs> historically, we, we always do a show where at least one time I have to make sure I'm on mute when I'm speaking. It's part of the, part of the signature of the it's, show. It's the yeah. tradition. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. absolutely what we do here. Absolutely. Well, here I am. Oscar, good to meet you, sir. Nice. I, I, I shall meet you again sometime in the near future. <laughs> All right, Steve, take it away here. Get us get us queued up. Absolutely. Well, we're, we're excited to have you guys on here. And, you know, we want to we talk a little bit about here, you know, your your company, right? Phoenix uh, National Network implies, Phoenix implies rising from the ashes, right? And and so we'd like to talk about it. It's what, we want this to be an open discussion, conversation on, on how we've all taken adversity and used it to rise up. So if okay. you could share a little bit, both both you, uh, Dr. Phil Breed, not Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil Breed, and Oscar, we'd love to hear your take on that question and and what you feel about how, how the adversity has kind of, you know, you've been able to turn that around. Yeah, um, I, I, I learned just recently, thank you for that, Steve and Cameron. We, it's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Uh, Oscar and I are big fans of your show, so. Uh, we are really stoked about being here. Uh, the great thing about um, pressure is that it, there's some good things come out of uh, pressure, right? And um, when I when I first got the idea for Phoenix National Business Group, it was really a concept of uh, helping people come together who uh, have the same have the same goal, have the same uh, desires and the same moral standard uh, to help each other to rise to the top. And for entrepreneurs, I find that it's hard for them to sometimes partner with others because their idea is their baby. So they feel like they have to be the only ones to give birth to this thing and, and to make it happen. But I found that great success comes with partnering with the right people. And the moment you can open yourself up to great connection, uh, you'll find your business will grow. It builds this, uh, this thing called accountability that it's, it holds you responsible to your goals. And uh, it's, a fine, it's a fantastic thing to have. Uh, this is how I met Oscar. Uh, when we started doing this via the Phoenix National Network aspect of the business, that's when I met Oscar. And uh, we connected within the first five minutes, and we've been friends ever since. I think we reach out to each other at least once a day now. So uh, great friendships can be formed even when you're pursuing your uh, business goals. My turn? Uh, yes, sir. Let's hear from you, Oscar. <laughs> yeah, so... Again, um, I met Phil through through a, a mutual acquaintance, and in the first five minutes, I'm like, okay, you know, I found another another relative, another like I like to say, your vibe finds your tribe, and we just connected, and we've been having a blast ever since. And talking about entrepreneurship, somebody said being an entrepreneur is like jumping off a cliff and trying to learn to fly on the way down. And what we've done with um, Phoenix National Network. Again, is bring people together and say, okay, 
how can we fly together? And and yeah, Cameron mentioned that I have chickens. So I had four chickens at one time and three of them died and I had one lone chicken and she would start crowing every morning. And I'm like, you're not a rooster. Why are you crowing? And I realized she was stressed. She was alone. She didn't have that flock around her like she used to have. Now, luckily, I got four more chickens now, which is quiet. But we're the same type of people. We, we are, we're pack animals. And trying to do stuff alone is, in, in the reptilian brain, it's dangerous and it's going to kill us. So, yeah, we need to form groups and we need to help each other. I never thought I would get emotional about chickens, but you made me emotional <laughs> about chickens. I, I, I got to tell you. <laughs> Holy well, cow. Welcome, I, 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 we need yeah. a name to your female chicken, and we got to go pray for her. And, you know, and, well, She's uh, fine now. She, she's absolutely good. You know, we got a new flock with her. Uh, yeah, we, we, we're starting a new vil, uh, a new uh, prayer chain for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you have that pastoral side to you, Doctor Phil. So yeah, you know. <laughs> good stuff. Well, I, I want to chime in on this on this question a little bit myself. You know, I mean, certainly there's there's professional things we've all experienced. You know, as as you guys know, uh, you know, shy and introverted, picked on, bullied, and and what I was able to do is was take that and leverage that and rise above that. And now, you know, I, I think I, I pride myself on the fact that I become somebody who can connect and speak with anyone and, and have grown, grown a, in a very respectable network. So taking these adversities and then turning it in. I mean, I remember when I was training in the martial arts and I had, you know, these, you know, uh, some really bad, I had got cut up, you know, eye, eye, eyebrows split open, uh, under here, over here, just, you know, my, my lip got split open. I mean, just crazy stuff that I got from the martial arts. And then eventually the straw that broke the camel's back is I learned not to duck into my sensei's roundhouse kick. Now, he was six <laughs> foot five, 300 pound, big African-American dude, big dude, super fast, super strong, coming at me. And I just ducked right into his kneecap and boom, broke the nose. The nose, not to get too graphic, but I will. The nose literally was over here, and you know I just kind of I'm not going to the emergency room. I spent five, six hours at a time because it's not life threatening, and they make you wait forever. So I'm like, all right, what are they gonna do? They can't put a nose in a cast. So I took the nose and I kind of straightened it, and every and I and and throughout the rest of the last next few days, it just kept shifting back, so I kept straightening it. Consequently, I had really really bad, uh, you know, uh, DVD and septum as a result of that. But anyway, it's all good. But what I learned here's the point. It's not about this crazy story. <laughs> the point, point is, I learned, <laughs> right, right. I learned now what I shouldn't do and what I should do. And what I became was really good at closing when I'm fighting big guys. And I'm, a, I'm a small guy. I always I was I was always up against big guys. So I learned how to close distance quick, get in there, jam them up and make sure I did what I had to do. And I became really, really efficient, uh, proficient at it. And so all those things. You know, and then you know, obviously now the pandemic hits, right? And there was. And listen, Steve, hammers, Steve, right? I, I just, I just gotta pull this in because you said something that I, I think is really good for networking. Right. You close that distance quick, right? And I think you do. You, you have taken your, your uh, martial arts skills at crossing the mat to the net because this, this guy, I gotta tell you, folks, and if you've networked with Steve, he closes that distance quick. That is true. <laughs> but you know, you, you know what? I one thing I, I want to point out about Steve too that i've noticed is that steve sincerely cares about people and i don't i don't that i don't think that should be taken away no. as a short point because that's what makes him effective Are we doing short jokes again now no, wait, 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 wait. listen steve, steve like, no. we're not short we're concentrated there's a difference <laughs> Vertically listen, challenged, Oscar. Vertically no, challenged. I'm just concentrated. I mean, this, this, this is definitely not the tall group here. I, I, we, we, we got everybody That's together. True, actually, no, you know, you're right. nobody yeah, over like five right over here, right? So anyway, you're bigger than life on the screen now, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> listen, uh, I just want to do a little pay attention. We got Josh Chernikov who's tuning in uh, from a plane right now. We got. I hope you're not flying it. Tom Herman, he's tuning in from Syracuse. I believe Steve is tuning in from uh, Stanford. Yeah. I'm tuning in from, I'm broadcasting from Valhalla. Uh, Phil, where are you at? Uh, I'm out of uh, Princeton, New Jersey. Princeton, New Jersey in the house. Oscar? I'm in uh, uh, Mamaroneck, New York. 
All right. So me and Oscar are the closest ones together here. We got three states between us and we got lots of states represented in the audience. So listen, if you're watching right now, let us know where you're tuning in from. We'll try not to make fun of your state too much. All right. Jersey, Unless it's so. Jersey. <laughs> Unless it's Jersey. Unless you're Long Island. Yeah, if, you're, if you're in Long Island, you're it's done. You're dope. It's over. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you, you mentioned about closing distance and, and you know, and that. And you know what? Uh, honestly, some of the things that I've learned about in, in you, you were talking about in networking, right? I've learned how to suppress the fear, right? I, you know, I probably am more afraid of people than probably the average person, but I just suppress it. I just say, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. I fear the fear and do it anyway. I, you know, fear I've learned is false evidence appearing real. So, and I, and I just walk up to people and I start talking and, and it's what it is, right? So, so it's, it's pretty cool, but you know, from, you know, some of the other adversities, you know, getting, getting laid off in, in the technology space and completely, you know, and, and you know, in advertising and then eventually, kind of shifting into technology that was a pivot and that was a great pivot for me and i could tell you so many more and then you know, obviously the pandemic as well so we all have our stories i know cameron you know i'm sure the, the audience may some may hear, have heard your story of what you've done to pivot with biz dev live and some of the other things you've done obviously you know cameron and i seeing what's going on with you know with what happened with the pandemic and starting this show up together and partnering up yeah. with the show right but but you have the biz dev live pro, you know program that you do like five days a week right sir <laughs> not 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 right now business is uh business is booming and we're getting back on track i mean my okay. pandemic story is you know we were definitely better off in terms of business wise before the pandemic but you know two years of introspection a little help from the government with ppp thank you u.s government um definitely gave me a moment to reflect and come back swinging i remember uh rob genovese in our master networks meeting saying you know the folks that take this time during this pandemic. And at that time, we didn't know how long it was going to last, what was going on. Uh, but Rob Genovese, I can, I can say that he's a smart guy. At least he had a smart moment. <laughs> and uh, he said, the folks that take the time right now to prepare are going to come out of this so much better uh, than they went in. And I think that's something that I think we uh, definitely took to heart in our chapter and Steve and I have definitely taken to heart and so many of the folks like Phil and Oscar have, I think also taken to heart and made uh, that uh, the case in terms of putting in that work so that your network is larger and your resources are more uh, than what they were before. One of the things I've learned is you know, in every adversity there lies a seed of equal or greater benefit and then yes. and that's exactly what, what's happened right for many people yeah. those who are looking at this looking for that seat of, of benefit that that great piece in there so well good stuff well, Russ, welcome to the show we love russ russ hedge is one of our, our big uh, supporters here and we've been on russ's show and he's been on our show appreciate you and there's a lot of great people that are visiting us today we are going to get into the next question so if you're ready community we'd like you to type in the comments right now the word rise up right uh in light of the phoenix network rise up if you're ready Let's let's uh, and then we're going to go and get into that next question for everybody to, to share on. So here's the question specifically. Have you found the pandemic to be good or bad? And if so, why? So let's, let's hear from you. Uh, you, Mr. Oscar, first. I'll, I'll throw you to the bus right now. Sure. I love that bus. I'm, you know, I'm concentrating. So I go right under the bus. I never get hurt by it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's as, as Cameron says, this is the time we took to like reconnect and refigure out how we're going to do things going forward. And I think either by design or by accident in you guys, in your show and, and our show has been a place for people to come to during the pandemic and say, Hey, Oh yeah, there are people out there. Business is still going on. We can still help each other. So it was a nice place to go to. So uh, the health stuff aside, for business, if you saw what was going on and you were, you were ready for it and you and you were able to connect with people, it was a good business decision to keep going forward during the pandemic and using new and exciting things like like Zoom and and you know all the platforms that uh, that were on like Roku and and Fire Stick and and LinkedIn and everything. So there's still avenues to get out there and network and work and improve your business. And I've I've been reading a lot during uh during COVID. A lot of great books. Um, my library is huge now. And it's just a matter of like, okay, you know, the crap is hit fan. What do we do to get out of it? And we've, and I think we've come out of it a lot better than we went in. Absolutely. 
So we want to get, and we, I want to hear your take on this, Phil. But uh, before we do, I want, we want the audience to say, hey, if you felt good, it was the pandemic has been good. There's been good that's come of it. Type in hashtag good. And if you think it's been bad, type in hashtag bad, right? Because we, we, we're not insensitive. We, we know that the, there's been some challenges here for a lot of people, right? People have lost jobs. People have lost loved ones, right? We've had some major stuff, right? But in general, if there's been good, tell us. If it's been bad, we want to hear from you as well. But how about you, Phil? What's, what's your take on how it's been for you? And, and, and this question is not meant for us to be insensitive. We know that everybody has had their challenges and, and we, we, our heart goes out for them and so forth, right? But love to hear your side, your side of that. Oh, you're oh, muted, sir. The mic is out again. Club. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oscar, why did you mute me? Um, you know why. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's the thing, right? I uh, even though everybody's there, everybody's had their different uh, feel of what the pandemic has done. Uh, some people have lost family members, which is very sad, uh, and and our hearts go out to them. But as far as business wise, uh, my perspective business wise is that it's about opportunity, and sometimes it's just a matter of opening your mind to opportunities. Right. Maybe the road that you normally travel is blocked at this moment, but maybe there's an alternate route. Maybe there's a route that you never thought of. And sometimes if we're just kind of close minded to the highway that we built, then we can miss the highways that have already been uh, built before us and uh, off ramps that we could have taken that can actually help us make our business better. Uh, because we're going through a low moment doesn't mean that that day is going to stay the same. Uh, we all know tomorrow is coming. So let's anticipate. Let's say, well, OK, when tomorrow comes, what could I do? Uh, you know, what can I do today to affect tomorrow? And keep thinking along those lines. Another great thing that I found in the, that I learned in this pandemic is partner with people. You know, find people that that are like minded positive thinking, forward thinking, and find out what they're doing to make it through a tough season. And uh, uh, a lot of times you'll find those people and you hear what the stories of what people are going through. A lot of times you might meet people who are going through worse situations than you. And uh, at the end of the conversation, you're like, wow, I thought I had it rough, but this person has it worse than me. So, you know, what am I really complaining about? You know, so it's really a matter of perspective and really think about it that, you know, uh, somebody has it worse than you and you could really help that person. Uh, I think if we if we think about it in that perspective, you're always ahead of somebody. And so you can help that person that's behind you that's looking for your help and so on and so forth. If we think like that, I think we would affect the world in a totally different way and realize that we're all here for somebody else's benefit. Absolutely. That's great. I appreciate that. That's, that's absolutely 100% true. One thing that, you know, I know we all of us happen to be, no coincidence here, we're all part of Master Networks, right? And we saw the adaptation of that. I don't know about you, you folks, but I felt more connected during the pandemic than ever before. Because I had people that, you know, you were, you know, I would be calling them and, trying to, you know, people I knew and, you know, trying to get a, you know, coffee meeting with them, coffee, get together, whatever. And, it, you know, it, it would take forever. We would never get it done. And instead we were jumping on a phone call or jumping on Zoom and it, and it was happening. So definitely getting more connected than ever before. And you, you saw it happen with Mass Networks, right? They shifted over. It's a networking group for those who don't know. We think it's a really good one. Okay. But they, they shifted over from, you know, being an in-person model in the Northeast, that is to a all virtual model and no plans of going back because we i mean i don't know about you guys but it was great being in person but there was a downside one of the downsides is you're spending 45 minutes sometimes getting to the meeting you're you're, you're you know the mingling afterwards now another 45 minutes getting home the meeting itself is an hour now you're two and a half hours in whereas now you know it's a solid you wake up you're you, you know you probably keep your pajama bottoms on or your shorts on throw a top on and 
you're right in the meeting and that's it. And then you fix your hair up, Oscar. I think your, your yeah, hair. We, is- now, now we know how Steve will. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I thought Steve, I thought Steve and perfect. I were neighbors because I'm like pajama bottoms. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, I, I got, I got binoculars on you there. <laughs> and Thanks, it's Steve. interesting. I thought, and I'm, and I'm interested to those in the audience that thought things were going to go one way after the pandemic. I thought one of the big revelations for me was like, oh, I'm going to do interviews for my hospitality company on Zoom. And so I've done a couple. Trying to get waiters and bartenders, people in the hospitality field to get on to Zoom. And I, I need to see uniforms. So I need to see the top, the bottom picture. So talk about pajama bottoms. I'm like, okay, dude, you know, uh, you know, I'm on the, I need to see the uniform. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know you needed me to, to be in the past. <laughs> Did they, here's the question. Did he stand up anyway? That's the question. I don't know if I wanted him to, you know, at that point. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's great. Full disclosure, I am wearing pajama bottoms. So. <laughs> but but, we're, but to that point, we're seeing now companies that went, were fully remote or partially remote. And nobody wants, not nobody, but most people don't want to come back to that ever again, right? They want to stay remote. And and I think there's some really good things to be said there. You know, it's, yeah. it's given people the ability now, you know, we've seen less usage of, of, of fossil fuel, right? We've right. seen the, the footprint, the carbon footprint going down a little bit. We've seen, you know, we've seen the, the cost of, of doing business going down a little bit. Although, on the other flip side, we see high, you know, rising inflation and all that stuff. So that's a whole nother conversation for another day. But, but I, I think it's really helped us as a, as a society in many ways. So I agree with you guys. It's been very good. If you, if you look at it for that, again, you can look at something half full, mm-hmm. the glass half full, the glass half empty. Right. So, I, I, and I know a few people have pivoted. And so for the audience out there, I just love to get feedback. I know uh, we had Chris Kane saying, you know, things weren't so good during the pandemic. Uh, he, he was saying that he feels like our productivity as a whole society has decreased. And I, I got to say, I definitely feel for, for good reasons and bad reasons, productivity has decreased. I think, you know, um, but, you know, for some places, you know, productivity is up more than ever, right? If you're working at Amazon, right. their productivity right. is freaking through, through the roof, right? But, um, you know, whether that's good or bad for society, you know, remains to be seen. But I'd love to know if you've pivoted, hashtag, uh, you know, yes, right? If you've pivoted, hashtag no, if you have not pivoted, uh, during the pandemic, if business remains the same, you know, Yolanda was saying, you know, things weren't so great for the pandemic. Tom Herman said this is good. So I'd love to know if you've pivoted uh, or if, if things have gone well. I'd love to know a little bit lo- more. Uh, Chris Kane, I loved having your explanation after you tagged the the bad there. Definitely appreciated that. Yeah, absolutely. It, you know, I, I think what, what uh, you know, I know Chris uh, being in an in outside sales role, that was that was tough, right? If you're your business was reliant on getting out to businesses, right? I believe Chris is in the payroll industry and getting out there and, you know, knocking on doors and there was no doors to knock on. Right. So how do you, how do you stay productive? But that's where, what we're talking about is you get innovative, right? Mm-hmm. You start to leverage LinkedIn a little bit more. Maybe you start to, you know, leverage your networking and your, you know, the different people in your life and, you know, get creative, right? The old model that was working, you know, you know, you may have to relook at it, right? So, uh, you know, I, I think that's we've seen a lot of that going on. There, there's okay. an old, there's an old saying: when you're going through hell, speed up. Don't <laughs> stay there. You know, right. don't stay there. Speed up. Get through it. You know, it's going to be rough. Get through it. Get to the other side. Look back and say, all right, what did I learn along that journey? And yeah. that is what a lot of people, a lot of you know, and and um, as Cameron says, you know, everyone's everyone's pivoting. And, you know, I lost my job several years ago. So I had to do that pivot way before the 40 million people that were affected by COVID right. had to pivot. So I was there going, been there, done that. Here's here's what you can do to, you know, level out that that uh, that hill that you're going through. Sure. So, yeah, it's- uh, there was a there was an SNL act right about this guy who was like in the 70s and uh, he. No, 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 sorry, wrong one. It was where he was a, a caveman. It was a caveman, <laughs> and he was stuck in the cave, and he was digging out, trying to dig out of the cave, right, for like the thousands of years. Then he got fossilized, and then he thawed out. Uh, and then he came out into the middle of Manhattan, 
and he was looking around and he's like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, with all these high buildings and all these different changes yeah. that took place. And, uh, you know, that is typical of how sometimes we do business. We're stuck, we're in our cave. We're like, this is the only thing that works. Uh, nothing else is going to happen. And it looks very dark, you know, but if we just kind of said to ourselves, maybe I should take a break and look at what's going on around me. What are other people doing? I believe that's a question all of us should, if you feel like, you know, you're stuck in the whole entrepreneurial thing. I was in sales since I was 15 years old. And one of the things I've learned in being in sales is find out what the top guy is doing. If I'm not making any money, yeah. I got to get close to the guy that's making money, especially when things are dry, right? Because there's somebody always making money. There's always a guy out there. You ever notice that guy in your sales department that he's like always on top of his game? <laughs> and and so uh, I think this is this is the power of networking. And really, when you're you know right. I, I you know shouting out Keith Ferrazzi's book at the beginning, like having that list of people you're you're actively networking. You know, there's people that you're going to have conversations with that don't directly tie into your business. And I think Steve is a big fan of those conversations. I'm a big fan of those conversations when I'm not drowning in uh, business work and kid engagements and all that stuff, right? You got to prioritize. But the idea that you can bring people into your network that make you more successful yeah. and you don't want to wait till you're successful to start doing this, right? I, I yeah. you know, my story, Steve referenced earlier, I was, you know, 18 and 19 and, and taking this, this winding road of like just not really good activity, you know, not graduating high school, having a kid at 19 mm. and I'm living in the middle of New York city. There's place and people after, you know, person that I could potentially connect with, I could reach out to for mentorship, the, the wealthy, the famous friends of friends. There's people that I could have asked, Hey, I want to get someplace. What do I do? But I just didn't have the confidence within me and the know-how to say, Hey, I, I'm, I'm, really in need of help right now. I could use some guidance. Hey, I'd love to come and work for you just to, to have some of your success. I'll work for free. I was interning. I was working for free, but I was doing it for places that I didn't really want to be. And so shows like this and the information and connecting with folks like this that are on this show, if you're watching this, this is what it's all about because you can sort of fast forward past all that garbage. Steve is a nice person. When we had our first conversation, he recommended a book to me. And that was the cement, the foundation of our uh, beginning of our relationship, because it was a good book. The E-Myth Revisited, right, that talks about building your small business. And so getting those little pieces, I'm reading that book, I'm like, oh, yes, I've been there. I've had that challenge. And so if somebody can give you those tips and that you don't get that information unless you utilize the power of your network. That's great. I love that. I, so we, we want to go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Phil, Dr. Phil. Yeah, I just want to add one thing to that. When I first started my business in 2009, I started with a camera that I bought off of uh, Craigslist, right? And my ideas were all over the place. And I remember I went to this networking meeting and I met a gentleman who owned a restaurant. And he was in the meeting and he heard, you know, he heard my spiel and, you know, how I was really trying to convince people that I had a business to work and I had everything going. I was doing everything I could do. And he, I remember he pulled me aside and he said, I'm going to meet with you. I'm going to take a couple minutes to talk with you about your business. And he took me, uh, he set an appointment with me at his restaurant and we sat down and he spoke to me for about two hours. He invited me twice. It was two hours each time. And those two hours changed my entire business. And, I, you know, this is what I'm saying is really based on experience. You know, he saw where I was lacking and really coached me out of it to where I would actually have a business at the end of the conversation. So, you know, there's always somebody that's willing to help you get out of whatever situation you're in because they have that experience. 
Absolutely. That's great so stuff. One thing I found is the more successful people are, the happier they are to help other people. So okay. they get there by helping other people, not from taking from other people. So it, again, finding a mentor will take so many years off of your learning curve. You know, they've been there, done that. Like, you don't want to go this way. You want to go that way. You know, you, you don't want to learn by experience because that, that's, a, that's a hard road. So yeah, that finding, finding mentors, finding other people, again, not people, not in your business, not in your, your vertical that yeah. know things that, you know, I'm, I don't want to bore you with, with some stories, but you know, I'm at the, at the last, um, at the last event we were with before we, we had the big golf outing, a five minute conversation with someone just turned everything I'm doing around. Absolutely. If you want to know what it is, set up a face to face with. There you go. I can, I can, I can attest that uh, myself, you know, not this last event, but the last, the last one we had, that was just, um, I believe it was, it was in Scarsdale. Uh, I met, I met a gentleman and, and that relationship has been incredible. And just, just a, uh, just a, as a result of a conversation. So um, we, we want to kind of wrap things up and we're going to, I'm just going to ask you to audience viewership, you know, our community to type in the, the hashtag how question mark. H O W question mark hashtag. And uh, we want, we want to wrap up with some final closing thoughts and then, you know, you guys can kind of maybe tell our community how they can reach you. Uh, but um, so the, the we want to kind of touch on not deep, not real deep on it, but how this new normal has changed, how you connect with other people uh, and, 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 and then maybe share on how you'd like them to connect with you. So if you can uh, start with uh, you, Oscar, if you'd like. And, and the sure. doctor will wrap us up. Take us home, Doctor Phil. So, what had? Not a lot of things have changed. I mean, when COVID was was hitting and we were all you know, locked up, that was different. But now we're getting back out, and I think it's more important now to know that we need to connect with other people than than before COVID. Like like uh, Phil said, we were in our cave. We, we were doing things our regular way. You know, unlike you, Steve, that you know I, I saw you at the golf outing. You were talking to a golf ball, so I know you were connecting with that golf ball. But everybody else, you know, wasn't. You, you were the only guy. Um, but, you know, it, we need to connect with other people. And now that we've gone through COVID and we know we need to connect with people, you know, and now it's it's an open field. We know how to do it. If you don't know how to connect with people, really talk to Steve. He's he's mastered it. Um, how to get a hold of me, it's really easy. Uh, OscarCapel.com is my website. I am a Legal Shield and ID Shield associate. And part of every sale, we donate to... Operation Underground Railroad to stop child sex trafficking here in the U.S. and around the world, and that's you know that's a cause that I've been I've been with for the last couple of years. Okay, so uh, the question uh, is is, uh, is a very good question for us. I appreciate the question. Um, Phoenix National Network started out because of the pandemic, right? And we we started doing. Uh, podcasting. Uh, Oscar was a big part of that. And uh, we partnered with a few other people within our business network to get it done. And uh, we were tripping over ourselves. I, no kidding. You know, we, we started learning the process of it. But now it is it is a, uh, a, a it, is, it is a structure all by itself. It's running very well. And it was a very good move for all of us. Uh, well, how you can reach me is actually by just downloading our app. We have an app both in the Droid Store and the Apple Store. So you just type in into the search uh, Phoenix National Network. Just type in Phoenix National Network, and you will see uh, all the all the things that we are doing uh, in our field and in our business. Thanks, guys. Awesome. That's great stuff. Yeah, I, uh, I'll, I'll just address real quick uh, one thing I'll say. And, you know, prior to the pandemic, a lot of my my connections were made physically, right, through through just living my life out and about or through networking. And I still value those things. Absolutely. But the change now has been through LinkedIn for me. And I've been able to leverage LinkedIn pretty significantly. And speaking of which. Uh, we have two sponsors of our shows, uh, uh, both Wes Lemos of uh, Sales Connector and Jordan uh, Mendoza of the um, Blaze Your Own Trail. You can see that there. Thank you for putting that up, Cameron. But 
but those those tools and just leveraging LinkedIn in general has been a really, really good way for me to really connect and reach out and, and really be able to build amazing, amazing relationships. So so make sure you're doing that. Make sure you leverage that. Talk to, to, to our, to our uh, sponsors if you'd like to learn how to really do it in a way that's not going to overwhelm you. But uh, we're appreciative of, of, of everybody. Oscar, uh, Dr. Philip Reed, appreciate it. Anytime we can have a doctor on our show, we're just excited because, you know, my, my mom was, you know, she I know she's proud of me, but she would have been proud of me if I was Dr. Steve. So, but to have Dr. Phil, I'm sure mom is super proud of you and Dr. Philip, right? Not Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil, right? So, uh, but uh, well, we're, hey, man, it's all good. You know, so, okay, some right? doctors are good. Some call me late for dinner. That's it. Exactly. Right? There you go. Exactly. I don't call me late for dinner. Whatever it is, man. As long as Phil is in there, we're good. Yeah. Absolutely. We don't want, we don't want every kind of doctor. You know, I, I think a proctologist that we can. <laughs> Oh man, it gave me a good visual there. I'm, I've got vision, visions of a rubber glove. Not a good, not a good visual right now. That's not a good but anyway, here, 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 listen. Uh, if you're watching this on the replay, make sure you ha- right type in yeah, replay. replay. We want to know if you're watching on the replay. But we're gonna end the show like we do. We're gonna we're, we we want to definitely rise up and connect. Make sure this, we're we're hump day. It's Wednesday. We've got half the week left. Obviously, an incredible weekend coming up. Uh, for us to celebrate, celebrate the independence of this country, freedom and 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 free enterprise and the. What, the what is July Fourth? What's that? What is July Fourth? Independence Day. No, it's my birthday. Well, happy birthday! Well, now we now we're really going to celebrate. Now, now I got to I got to smash two extra some, cans some, uh, in my head. Independence you know? Day thing for <laughs> the United States of America, something. But there's a lot of fireworks in my honor on July Fourth. So go check them there out, go. guys. Awesome stuff. Well, happy birthday in advance to you, to you, Cameron, and to the U.S. of A. So, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna end this like we always do with a countdown across it. So, uh, as if you can, audience, viewership, community, just count down with us, and then shout out all caps and crush it in the comments, and we're gonna scream out crush it at the end of this. So, ready? Five, five, four. four come on, Oscar. Three, three two, two, one. one. Go out there and have an amazing week, everybody. We have Aaron Galoob next week. Have you ever been blindsided? If you have, you're going to want to check into next week's episode, July 6th. Same bad time, same bad channel. We will see you there. Have an amazing week. Oscar, Phil, thank you so much for being on the show. And we're going to play this off with the video. We got people in the, in the comments. Crush it. Val, thank you for the happy birthday. Appreciate you. Val says thank you. We got so many people typing in. Thank you, everybody. We will see you next week. Steve Spiro, you're a mentor, you're a consultant, you're a business owner, but most importantly, you're a host of your own show and you're also a master connector. Steve Spiro is one of my idols and I love listening to everything that he does. He's such a dynamic individual. Some of the topics I really enjoy speaking on is how to really connect, you know, whether it be in person or through social media. I love to lead with my weaknesses. I lead with, you know, my vulnerabilities. It's fine because I'm okay with who I am. Number two is how to go from being inward focused, self-focused into others focused. Being willing to give and and go out there and, and, and look to serve. That will attract the right things. Another one is on leveraging LinkedIn to really grow your business. You can reach a lot more people. You can broadcast a message to people that actually consented to want to know you. And then lastly, overcoming big obstacles. I love sharing. I was a shy, jabbered kid, picked on, bullied, learning disabled, dyslexic, really in a dark place. I was really in a box in the shell and I've been able to break out of that box. And, and so I love being able to inspire people and really help them. So the Master Connector was born. The world is my networking event. Right? I meet people all the time. My goal is to meet three strangers every single day. Steve is open to meeting you. You should set up a face-to-face with Steve. One little conversation can really change your life.